Hi, this is Maggie. In this video we're going to look at another looping construct that can be used when we know in advance how many times we want a loop to execute, the for loop. This program from the text, part of software to support a library summer reading program, obtains five sets of name minutes pairs from the user. We wrote a while loop to obtain the names. To drive the while loop, we used a loop control variable called numchildren. The variable is initialized before the loop to zero, tested in the loop header in the test numchildren less than five, and incremented by one at the end of the loop body. This is a standard pattern for writing a conditional loop that will execute a set number of times. An alternative to this structure is a counting loop, or for loop. We use a counting loop when we know in advance how many times the loop should execute. We will convert this program to one that uses a for loop. We will still use a loop control variable, numchildren, and the loop control variable will still take on the values 0 through 4 in the loop body. But we do not maintain the variable, the for loop structure, maintains it for us. I will therefore remove the initializer code before the loop numchildren equals zero and the incrementer code within the loop numchildren plus equals one. Now I will change the loop header to read four num children in range 5. And that's it. The loop will function in exactly the same way. This is a little easier to read than a while loop because all of the loop control information is contained in this one line. It essentially says this loop executes five times. Let's pull that loop header apart a bit. We have the loop control variable numchildren, but then we have a keyword in and a new function range. Let's look at what a range is. This is easiest to practice with in the console. I can type range open paren 5 close paren, but Python just responds by telling me range 0, 5, which isn't very helpful. However, if I convert range 5 to a list by typing list open paren range open paren 5 close paren close paren, Python will list out the values that are in the range. A list is another structure. The command doesn't literally mean list this out, but we can think of it that way for now. When I do that, I see that range 5 is the values 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. A for loop works by having the loop control variable take on each value in the range once in order for the body of the loop. When the range runs out, the loop exits. The range function can take three arguments. Those arguments are start, stop, and step in that order. Two of those arguments can be omitted, start and step. If they are omitted, the default values of 0 for start and 1 for step are used. So range 5 is equivalent to range 0, 5, 1. The range values generated are from start up to, but not including, stop in increments of step. If I include two values, it is the start and the stop. Let's look at what values are in the range 10, 15. Make a prediction. What do you think we'll get? Remember the default step is 1 and the values are up to, but not including, stop. I'll press enter, 
and we get 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Is that what you predicted? From 10 up to, but not including, 15 in increments of 1. Now suppose I add a step value. I'll put range 10, 22. Make a prediction and 10, 12, 14, 16, 18. To drive a loop you want to execute a certain number of times, just use range and the number of times you want the loop to execute. But if you want to use the value within the loop and the value takes on a predictable sequence of values that we can construct with a range, then you might include a start and a step. For, for example, we can do a countdown from 10 to 0 using range 10, negative 1, negative 1. That's starting at 10, down to but not including negative 1 in increments of negative 1. You should practice with the range function and practice writing loops that execute a particular number of times by using a for construct with a range. Remember that for is all lowercase, just like most of the Python keywords. When you can write ranges and predict the values in ranges with perfect accuracy and write your counting loops with the for construct, you're ready to move on.